picked up our washer and dryer today. We got the combo unit. I'm pretty confident after watching a bunch of YouTube videos and everything. So, man, I'm so excited. I mean, that's like pretty big. I'm like really surprised. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to use this thing. I'm so happy. No more laundry mat. <laughs> So that's where she goes. This shelf he's taking down. It's gonna be like a construction zone in here. What's this little silver thing for? What's this little silver thing for? Really? Okay, so I was pretty confident there wasn't a metal beam there, but so to make sure before I stuck the hole saw on there, I just went ahead and used a drill, put the screw, and put them in just every so often to make sure that I wasn't going to hit no metal beam. I'd rather hit it with the screw than the hole saw. Hmm. Let me see the hole. Oh my gosh. We have a little baby hole. Watch your eyes. Where's your safety glasses? Recording. Yes. That's what your walls are made of. That's crazy. And that's some crap. No wonder people freeze. easy huh I mean considering there's a spot for it I can't imagine you had to make a spot for it that kind of stuff just that plumbing and all that I'm glad the spot is here we can just slap her in I'm amazed at how not thick this fiberglass is yeah Hercules, Hercules! 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 Hercules!
Oh, oh yeah, look, it's on the, watch yourself, it's right there. That's nice. Mm-hmm. I'll pay extra for the white on the fat, remember? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I think it's cheap. They're actually, the other one is more expensive. Wow, that really cool. Wow. Is it all over your and pants? I made a mess if you didn't see that. It looks like it's on your zipper. Yeah, you could have made a huge mess. Huge. You do see that too right there, right? Like the strip of toothpaste? Yeah, I see that. You get about like the, the people putting this thing in, flinging that stuff all over the place. Huh. I finally got that little piece off the sink. Did you? Yeah. So I have a few tips that I've learned in this past eight months that might help you uh, either help you decide if you want to get one or just help you with some issues that you might be having. So one of the issues that we were having is um, I would get an error code that there wasn't any water coming in. I knew that that couldn't be the issue, the real issue, because we had just installed it. It wasn't clogged up from regular use and there was no leaks, there was nothing. So. It threw that code that there wasn't enough water coming in because I was using the water. So I was trying to run a load of laundry and do the dishes at the same time. I always try to do one first thing in the morning when no one's up and then late at night, like right when we go to bed and that's perfect. By the time I get up, it's done and I just take it out and fold it and put it all away. Another code that has been thrown a couple times is um, when I'm running the clean cycle, it will say that there's clothes in there. <laughs> And I'm like, no, there's no clothes in there. So you, you obviously can't run the clean cycle with clothes in there because the purpose is to clean the machine. It fills up with water as much as it can and it runs through that seal and just kind of cleans it all out. All the lint and stuff that gets built up in there, it washes it all out. So the way I, I just stopped it, turned it off, and restarted it. The only other issue we've had was the dryer vent hose that comes with it. You know, that crappy silvery stuff that just falls apart. It's not even as strong as heavy duty tin foil. It's terrible. But um, the piece they give you is extremely short. And I think that's because where the vent is on the back of the machine, it would be best if it could just go straight out. Like if your vent is straight out, but this had to go See, the, the vent is on the back on this corner, and then the hose has to go like that, <laughs> sideways out, so there's a bend. Uh, we had a bunch of buildup of lint get in there, which that's a fire hazard, so never run your washing machine when you leave. First of all, you shouldn't be doing that anyway because you should be turning off your water when you're leaving just in case there's leaks. But anyway, it wasn't drying. That's how we figured it out and it wasn't dirty. I had run the clean cycle. Jeff pulled it out and he pulled that hose off and there was a big clump of lint in there. We got a longer hose and that fixed the problem. Okay, so my top tips for you are, first of all, use liquid soap. It dissolves better, it cleans better, and it will keep your machine clean and your machine will last longer. Number two, do not use fabric softener. Liquid fabric softener is trash. It does nothing good for your clothes, your health, or your machine. So if you want your machine to last a long time, just don't bother with that stuff. Okay, so I just wanna show you how clean this is. This is after eight months. I have not cleaned this out at all. You know how it gets all gummed up and nasty and icky? I'm telling you, it's because I don't use fabric softener and I use liquid detergent 
and I only use the amount that the manufacturer suggests, and that's two tablespoons. No matter what size your load is, don't go more than two tablespoons. If you wanna use vinegar for uh, fabric softener, you put it in this area. This is where you would put your fabric softener, but seriously, I don't even know why they make that stuff. I don't know why they even put a spot for you to pour it because honestly you guys that stuff is just terrible this should get your clothes clean enough and they should not stink so if your clothes are stinking maybe you could try a laundry stripping thing or something because you should not need fabric softener and you can't use um dryer sheets in there either it says right on the book don't use dryer sheets um, I have not had any issues with my clothes not being soft. They come out perfectly soft, even my big towels. But if you're having an issue with your clothes not coming out soft, you can add vinegar and you can just add vinegar right in the spot where you put the fabric softener. And vinegar softens your clothes and it will not make them stink. Number three, clean out the seal every single time, especially if you have dogs and cats. You want to clean that seal out every single time. It, it's just going to make your machine last longer. Okay, so you can see all the dog hair and lint that builds up from just one wash. And that's not slime, that's just water <laughs> and dog hair. So I have this hook, like I said, that I have this uh, microfiber cloth hanging on. And I open this up and there's always a little bit of water in there, so I just dampen it like that. And first thing I do, I just kind of wrap it around my finger and then just wipe. Right? And then, I mean, obviously, like any other, I do a much better job than this, but it's hard with just one hand. And then I get in here and I go all the way around. See that? Um, but anyway. I'll get way up here because lint will build up right here like dry lint it's a tiny bit there yeah so I go oh, oh here we go there's a little bit and this is after one load you don't want that stuff building up so anyway that's what I do every time the machine automatically tells you when the clean cycle needs to be run and it's after every 30 washes. I run the clean cycle more often than that. I like to do it once a week and it's just because I don't want any issues because I've seen the YouTube videos where it's clogged up, it's not drying, it's blah 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 and I don't want that. I want to do everything I can to try to avoid that. So I just run the clean cycle once a week. Number four keep the book that goes with your machine because it's going to throw error codes and you're not going to know what the heck is going on and you might not have internet service to look it up. So keep the book, keep it handy so that if you do have error codes, you can just grab it and see what the code is and fix it. And it usually tells you, you know, you look in the troubleshooting part, it'll show the code and then it will tell you what to do to fix it. Okay, this is the perfect example. I have no idea what this means. And sometimes I can just turn it off. I just hold down and it'll turn off and just kind of reset. But it's not even turning off. So I got my book out. And it says F1E1. Switch off the machine and unplug it. Wait for approximately one minute. Then switch it back on. Again, if the problem persists, contact technical assistance. All right, so we're gonna try that and see what happens. Okay, it's been one minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that back in. And perfect. See, so keep your book. Number five, leave it open to dry after each load or, or after you're done. Like maybe you're gonna do two or three loads do your two or three loads, but when you're done, leave the door open and this open and you will not get that mildewy, icky, sour, nasty, moldy smell. It won't happen if you follow my tips. <laughs> okay, so we did finally cut that top section out and look at how much room that gave me. We haven't completely finished it. Jeff just cut this section out and then we're gonna get some new trim probably some trim like some nice wood and all 
stain it or maybe just put poly on it. For now, he just put the trim that was already here back up, just not down here. Um, so that way it's not just completely ugly, but <laughs> once we get this trimmed out, I will update on Instagram and show you guys a picture. Um, but I thought I'd show you a little bit how I have it organized. I have this cloth here hanging on a hook that I use to clean out the seal every time. And then I have a laundry bag. And then these are um, some little plastic things that hang up on the ladder so that you can dry clothes, air dry clothes outside. So that's nice. We spent three weeks dry camping on my aunt and uncle's property in Colorado Springs, and these came in super handy. We had water hookups and 30 amp electric, and it was hot, so I didn't want to run the dryer. They're really lightweight, and I can fit a whole load on these no problem. And I'll leave a link in the description below. So in this basket, I keep all my laundry stuff. Got the soap in here. I put it in a pump bottle so that I can use exactly two tablespoons. Um, vinegar, stain remover, and bleach. And then my dryer balls. I got those at Dollar Tree, by the way. You can't use wool dryer balls in here. That's what the book said, so unfortunately. But um, I think it has something to do with lint comes off of it and it can cause some kind of clog. So don't use wool dryer balls, but those work great. And then in this bin, I keep my collapsible bucket, my big bottle of laundry detergent, and then just my cleaning rags that are dirty that need to be washed. I keep those separate. I keep this one on a silicone mat so that it won't slide around because um, sometimes when it spins, this one will kind of slide back but it usually only goes about that far so i don't worry about that one too much but um these two baskets i'm not brave enough to let them ride here <laughs> because i that would be a mess if they fell and broke so i just take those down and put them on the floor side by side right there and they they ride just fine there so okay so we're gonna go ahead and do a load of laundry a pair of jeff jeans <sighs> Jeff. Jeff jeans. <laughs> okay, I have a pair of Jeff's jeans. <laughs> okay, so I have a pair of jeans, a pair of jean shorts, Cameron's hoodie, uh, another flannel of Cameron's, and then a large hoodie. So that's that's pretty much a full load. But I'm going to check to be sure that it's a full load once I put everything in, and I'll show you a trick for how to know that you're not putting too much clothes in. I've already checked the pockets, by the way. <laughs> Always check the pockets. You don't want to wash a chapstick in there and leave grease stains everywhere. I can't remember where I heard this trick to know if you have too much in there or, or whatever. It was on another YouTube channel. But anyway, let me just show you. So you put your stuff in there. And um, the top of the washer, you want to stick your hand inside open palm like this with your fingers spread and touch your thumb to the top and if your pinky touches the clothes you're good you don't want it to be smashed up or whatever okay so i'll close that turn this on and i'm gonna do cold water actually i'm gonna do warm water the spin speed is pretty much always on fast unless i'm doing um just like our dish cloths or something like that. I haven't used the delay start yet. <laughs> it's just, I'm always here, so it doesn't make sense. Okay, I'm choosing to do a regular load. You can do express. Um, that just uses a little bit less water. I pretty much do regular all the time. I just feel like it seems like they get cleaner doing regular. I'm gonna turn that down to warm. And I just grab my soap. And before I put the laundry soap in here, I measured out two tablespoons with the pumps so that I would know <laughs> exactly how many pumps. And it's six pumps, so. Okay. And I won't use any bleach or vinegar. Um, okay. And then since this, this is heavier materials, I'm gonna go ahead and um, do the time to dry for an hour and 35 minutes. On lighter clothing, it takes only an hour. So, um, and then you hold down the start button for three seconds. 
and then there we go once it's done it will be completely dried and everything so the only thing i ever use this is the wash cycle i have used um rinse and spin i can't remember why i don't know but i've used that i've used the spin and drain um whites of course for whites i i wash my white towels in there and they come out fluffy and soft and perfect um colors i have used i use this to um wash our big our it's not really that big but our quilt and then um our kids comforters regular i pretty much use all the time express um like i said it uses a little bit less water and so i usually do that for cleaning rags or dish rags or um, our reusable paper towels um, and then you can do just a dry so I've used this like when we've gone swimming if I don't have time to hang our swimsuits out to dry on hooks I just stick them in here and dry them so that they're not wet like if we're gonna travel the next day or um, maybe it's started raining or something like that so I've used that a few times to dry our swimsuits and that works pretty well and that's pretty much it I haven't used this pre-wash or superwash, I just haven't needed to. So I actually just separate um, the girls' clothes and they fold their own. So that's what I am just tossing is Cameron's clothes in a pile and then Casey's in a pile. And then I take care of ours. This is what I had in here. This is all socks and underwear. And then um, one t-shirt of Casey's, two shirts, one mine, one Jeff's, one pair of shorts of mine, one of Jeff's, um, a bra, a washcloth, and Cameron's clothes. She has one, two, three, four pair of shorts, two shirts, and a swimsuit bottom. So all that was one load. So as you can see, I can fit quite a bit of clothes in here. I haven't had any issues keeping up with my laundry except for when we went boondocking or if we've been at a site that just has electric and water and no sewer. So if you just do one load a day, this is very easy to keep up with. And I usually do two or three because I do blankets and rugs and everything in that washer. So. Thank you guys so much for watching until the end. If you got any value from this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. You all know what to do. If you're having an ant problem or if you're considering buying a tabletop ice maker, these two videos may help. And I'll see you next week.